Hello everyone. I uh, wanted to do one more quick video to do the last topic uh, in Alex that we didn't get a chance to get to, and that is continuous exponential growth or decay. Now, again, to start out, um, your topics in Alex, it, Alex kind of tells you the name of the topic and it tells you that you're going to be using continuous exponential growth or decay. Uh, I'm not going to do that on a quiz or a test. So what you're looking for to know that this is the model you're looking for, the word continuous must appear in the problem in order for this to be the model that you're looking for. So just kind of like in the compound interest formula, the word compounded had to be in there to know that you were using the compound interest formula. Similarly with this one, the word continuous has to be here for us to know that we're dealing with continuous exponential growth or decay. Okay, so the continuous part means it's basically means that the compounding is done every moment of every day. Um, and so this is kind of based on the, um, the compound interest formula, but this applies to lots of things, not just money. Um, we also have like populations and things like that um, follow a continuous exponential growth model. So a continuous exponential growth or decay model looks like y equals y sub zero times e to the r times t. So uh, that's your um, equation for this one. And what everything in here represents, that y value that's over there on the left side, this is your population for the amount that you have at time t. That's going to feel very uh, similar um, to the growth and decay model from before. And again, this number out front here, that y sub zero, that is the population or amount that you had at time t equals zero. That's your initial starting population or amount. That's what the the zero and the subscript down here means. It means where you started when t was zero. All right, e is the base of this exponential. Again, e is not a variable. e is the natural number, which again is 2.718-ish. 2.7-ish, just a number. It's in your calculator, not a variable. Last couple things we have is R. That's a variable up here. R is your rate of growth or decay. And again, R is going to tell you whether you have growth or decay. If R is greater than zero, you have exponential growth. So instead of this time being um, your base being bigger or smaller than one, this is going to be whether this R up in the exponent is positive or negative. So if that R in your exponent is positive, we've got exponential growth. And if that R in the exponent is negative, we have exponential decay. And again, growth and decay mean the same thing as they did before. Growth means that your population or amount is increasing as time goes on. And decay just means that your population or amount is decreasing as time goes on. And finally, we have this T. And T is time. And just like before, this can be any units of time. It does not have to be years like it did in the compounding. Um, this can be any units of time at all. whatever we are given. Okay, so that's what a, comp a continuous exponential growth or decay model looks like. And again, the word continuous has to be um, present here in order to use this one. All right, so let's do an example here. An initial population of 730 fish is introduced into a lake. 
the fish population grows according to a continuous exponential growth model. Again, it says continuous. We know that's, that's where we're at. There are 949 fish in the lake after 13 years. Okay. A. Let T be the time in years since the initial population is introduced. Let Y be the number of fish at time T. Write a formula relating Y to T. Okay, because we are told this is a continuous exponential growth model, I know that our formula is going to look like Y equals Y sub zero times E to the RT. But we're going to have to solve for some of these things um, to make it fit our uh, formula, like our information here. So what are some of the values of these things from what we have here? How about this 730 fish? So an initial population of 730 fish is introduced into a lake. Well, that's our initial population. That means that's the population when time was zero. That means our Y sub zero is 730 fish. Okay, so I know that this guy is 730. Now to be able to uh, write a function, we usually want Y equals, and we wanna solve for Y sub zero, and we wanna have an R value in two. The only variables that we want in here are Y and T, right? Because they tell us that's what our variables are, Y and T. Those are the only variables that we want in here. So even if I plug that Y sub zero in, I have y equals 730 times e to the r times t. Well, I have 730, that's a number. e is not a variable, that's a number. And y and t are my variables. So really, the only thing I'm missing is r. I have to figure out what r is. I want a number in there. I don't want that to be a variable. So. To find our model, we got to figure out what R is. In order to do that, there's a piece of information that we haven't used yet. And that's the fact that there are 949 fish in the lake after 13 years. That's a piece of information that's going to help us solve for R. I know that there are 949 fish. That's the population of fish. That's a Y value. So Y is 949 when T, my time, is 13 years, right? Because after 13 years, we've got 949 fish in the lake. That means Y is 949 when T is 13. So I'm going to take those values and plug them into my function here, and then I can solve for R because I will have everything in my function except for R. So let's plug that in. So Y is 949. I know that my initial population is 730 times E to the R. I don't know what R is, but I know that when Y is 949, my T value here is 13. So now I've got 949 equals 730 times E to the 13 times R. I can solve for R. So I just have to figure out how to solve this equation. Okay, this is an exponential function. My variable's up here in the exponent. So to solve an exponential function, we gotta isolate the exponential function by itself. So I gotta get rid of that 730. I'm gonna divide both sides by it. So I'm gonna get 949 divided by 730 is equal to e to the r times 13. I'm gonna write that as 13r. My brain likes that better. You can leave it as R times 13, do what feels good to you. My brain just really likes 13 R. Okay, so now we have the exponential by itself. I cannot get both sides here as exponentials with the same base. So I gotta take the logarithm of both sides. We've mainly been working with uh, log base 10, but because I have a base of E here and log base E is in my calculator, I'm going to take log base E of both sides here. I'm going to use log base E when I take my logarithm. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. 
I'm going to use base E. And that's helpful for me. I'll come up here because now, let's see, I've got log base E, which is ln of 949 over 730, I can put that in my calculator, equals log base E of E to the 13R. My base matches my base. This says E to what power gives me E to the 13R. That's just the 13R power. The base cancels the base and these guys go away. And I'm just left with 13R over here. So then to get to R, I'm just going to divide both sides by 13. And so now R is equal to this thing here, and I can put that in my calculator. To put that in my calculator, um, just so you can see, I'm going to use the ln. Because again, log base E is ln. So I'm going to use the ln button when I do this. For 730 divided by 13. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 0 0.02. And so now I've got a value of R. So to write a formula relating Y to T, I know that Y is going to equal 730. That's my initial amount times E to the R, which is 0 0.02 times T. I now have an equation with just y and t in it. This is the equation linking y and t that they were asking for. And then the last thing, it says, how many fish are there 14 years after the initial population is introduced? And they want us to round to the nearest whole number. Okay, how many fish? Fish is my y value, right? Y is our population of fish. So how many fish, that's asking for what is y, are there after 14 years? Well, 14 years after the initial population, that means that t is 14. So basically, I want to know what y is when t is 14. I have a function that links y and t, so I'm going to plug in t equals 14 and figure out what y is. So y is going to be 730 times e to the 0 0.02 times 14. And I can put that in my calculator. And when I do, I get 965.88. And it wants me to round to the nearest whole number. So after 14 years, there is 966 fish in that population. Okay, so I hope that helps with this topic. And Alex, um, again, you're going to identify your initial amount and use this extra piece of information to plug in to solve for R. Um, that's gonna gonna be the process for all of these. Um, is that you're gonna have to solve for R so that you can get an equation down here with just Y and T in it. And then once you have your pop your uh, equation, you will use the information they give you, plug in a value, and uh, solve for uh, the other variable. You can use your calculator. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you on Wednesday for your test. You've got this. Let me know if you have questions. Have a great day.